Welcome to my lecture online. Here we have a real interesting problem for you. It's a resistor circuit with two batteries and we're need, we need to find the current in all of those branches so that we can answer whether or not these four statements are correct or not. So let's read the problem. It's very straightforward. The figure shows a circuit having eight resistances of one ohm each. So at least every resistance ha every resistor has the same resistance. They're labeled R1 through R8 and there are two ideal batteries which means that they will keep the same voltage regardless of the current draw with voltages V1 equals 12 volts and V2 equals 6 volts. Notice they have V2 first and V1 next so you make sure you don't get those mixed up. And which of the following statement or statements is or are correct? So we have four statements, four currents related to four of the resistors. So when you take a look at the circuit, you realize that all of the batteries are in the two horizontal branches. There's no batteries anywhere else. There's perfect symmetry. So what we could potentially do is we could collapse one half the circuit on top of the other. Matter of fact, we're going to do that as method two. We want to also show that we can just straight brute force it as is, work through it by using the Kirchhoff rules of current and voltages. So, what we need to realize is since there is perfect symmetry, and we can see that since this is the positive side of the battery, and this is the neg uh, negative and positive and negative, that current will probably flow in this direction. So, this way and out in the two directions, and that the current here and here must be the same. So, I'm going to call this I1, and I'm going to duplicate that here, I1, because I believe that you'll have the same current in both branches. Then here we can call the current through here, I2, and the same over here, we can call that I2. And then since there's perfect symmetry, we can then see that the current going this way should also be the same, so we're going to call that I3 in this direction and I3 in this direction. And then we have one current in this branch, let's call it I4, and another current in this branch, let's see, I3, I3, I4, and I5. So we have five different currents. Also, this voltage is the 6 volts, and this voltage is the 12 volts. Make sure we don't get those mixed up. All right, now we're ready to use Kirchhoff's rules. So, let's see here. We can say that I1 must equal I2 plus I3, because at this branch point, we have one current entering and two currents leaving. So, we can say that I1 must equal I2 plus I3. And that works in both directions. Then we can say that I2 plus I2 must equal I4. So 2I2 must equal I4. And then finally here we can see that this current will be the sum of I4 plus 2I3. So we can say that I5 is equal to 2 times I3 plus I4. So now we have three equations. We have five unknowns on the currents. So now we need two more equations to solve for all of them simultaneously. So we'll need to do some loops. And uh, let's see here. One loop would be going this way. So we can go around this loop. And so if we would call that loop one and uh, loop one. So doing loop one right here. Starting from this point right here, we have a voltage drop across the resistor. We have current I5, so that's I5 times 1, or simply I5, and it's a drop, so it's negative. Then we have a voltage rise across the battery, plus 6. Then we come this way, and we see a voltage drop for I1, so that's minus I1. And then we're coming this way, we have an other voltage drop, minus I3, and that must equal 0, because we went all the way around the loop. We can do the second loop, which is this loop right here. When we do that loop, uh, let's start from this point right there. We can come this way, so we have a minus I2 voltage drop. Here we have a voltage drop that would be minus I4. Here we have a voltage rise plus 12. And then we go across this resistor against the current, so that's voltage rise plus I3, and that equals zero. All right, so now we have five equations. We should be able to solve for all five currents. Hmm. So, let's see here. 
So here what we want to do is we want to get rid of some of these currents and replace them so that we only have two equations and two unknowns here. So we have I1 and I2. Could we get rid of I3? We could do that by using this equation. And we can get rid of I4 by using this equation. And let's see, I5, yeah, we can get rid of I5 as well. So that's what we're going to do. So this is equation number one. So we come up here, equation number one, and minus I5 can be replaced by minus 2I3. That would be minus 2I3 and minus I4 plus 6 minus I1, we'll keep that one, and minus I3 and I3 here, we can say that I3 is equal to I1 minus I2. Solving that for I3. So minus I3 is a negative of that. That would be minus I1 and minus I is a minus or plus I2. And all that added together should equal zero. We're not there yet because we still have an I3 and an I4. I4 can be replaced by two I2s. So we have minus two and I3 replaced by I1 and I2. So we have two minus 2 times I1 minus I2 minus I4 which is minus 2 I2 plus 6 minus 2 I1 plus I2 equals 0. So getting rid of parentheses minus 2 I1 plus 2 I2 minus 2 I2 I guess those two cancel plus 6 minus 2i1 plus i2 equals 0. And finally, we have minus 2i1 minus 2i1, which is minus 4i1 plus i2 equals minus 6. And changing the signs, I get 4i1 minus i2 equals positive 6. There's my first of the two equations with just i1 and i2. I will do the same with the second equation. So here, for loop, uh, for equation number two, I have minus I2, minus I4, which can be replaced by minus 2I2, plus 12, plus I3, and I3 is minus I1 plus, uh, uh, I1 minus I2. So that's a plus, we get plus I1 minus I2 equals zero. All right, so we have uh, one I1, minus I2, minus two I2, that's minus three I2, minus one is minus four I2, equals negative 12. There's my second equation. So I have two equations, two unknowns, I should be able to solve for I1 and I2. Now let's see here. How about if I multiply both sides by a minus 4? I'm going to multiply both sides by minus 4. So this gives me minus 4i1 plus 16i2 equals a positive 48. So now I'm going to combine these two equations. If I add them up, the i1s drop out. I have 16i2 minus 1 is 15i2 is equal to 48 plus 6 or 54. All right. Okay, so simplifying that, we divide 54 by 15, so we get I2 is equal to 15, goes into 54 three times. That leaves us with 9 over 15, which is equal to 3.6 amps. All right, so now we have a value for I2. Now I2 runs through R7 and R8, which is now one of the answers, so we don't know yet if we're on the right track. But we'll now take uh, the value for I2 and plug it in here to get I1. So here we get I1 minus 4I2 equals minus 12. So that means that I1 is equal to minus 12 plus 4I2 and I2 is 3.6, so double that, that's 7.2, double that, that's 14.4. So we have I1 equals minus 12 plus 14.4, so I1 
is equal to 2.4 amps. Now let's see, we have a 2.4 amp up there, yes we do, and that's flowing through R5, which is I1. So that looks like this is correct. We found I1, which flows through R5, and we said it was 2.4 amps. So we're almost there. Now, notice we have I2 and I4 here, so we can say that I4 is equal to 2 times I1, which is 2 times Oh, I2, sorry, I2, there we go, I2, which is 2 times 3.6. So that means that I4 is equal to 7.2 amps. So I4 runs through R1, and that's 7.2 amps, so we know that A is correct as well. Wow, so far we found two of the answers. Okay, what else do we have? Um, I3. I3 is equal to I1 minus I2. And notice that I1 is 2.4 and I2 is 3.6. So that means I3 is equal to minus 1.2 amps. Now, let's see here. I3 runs through R2 or I4, R4, R2. 1.2 amps, but they're saying the magnitude. They don't care about the direction. So in essence, since we have a negative value, we know that I3 actually flows in the opposite direction. But since they're only looking for the magnitude of the current, and we got minus 1.2, with the magnitude is plus 1.2, that means that B is the correct answer as well. So then what do we have left? I5, R5, let's see. I5 runs through R3. So let's see which one's that. I need this one, R3. I need the current going through R3, which is right here. So I need to find I5. I5 is 2I3 plus I4. So I5, if I come this way, is equal to 2 times I3. In my case, I3 is a minus 1.2, so minus 1.2 plus I4, and I4 was 7.2. So that gives me minus 2.4 plus 7.2 that's 4.8 amps and sure enough the magnitude of the current flowing to r3 which is i5 is 4.8 amps so we know that that's correct as well and interestingly enough it looks like all four currents all four statements are indeed correct in this particular case now notice that we did this by simply going brute force but realizing since there's some symmetry that the current going this way must equal the current going this way, the current coming this way is equal to the current going that way, and the current through this resistor must equal the current through that resistor. Now we found out that it's actually flowing the opposite directions. And if we thought about it, that makes sense because that's the bigger voltage right here. So you think that the voltage would drive the current this way. So it makes sense that the current flows away from this point. But it doesn't matter if we assume that the current flows towards. So then by looking at the currents, we can make these three connections. I1 is equal to the sum of I2 and I3. 2I2, the two I2s coming together add up to I4, and I5 is made up of the I4 and two I3s coming together. So that's what we have here. So we have the three equations. To find the next two equations, we do a, a loop around these two right here, loop one and loop two. So we do all the voltage rises and voltage drops. Notice that resistance times current gives you voltage. Since all the resistances are 1 ohm, we just simply take the values of the current. Negative when it's a voltage drop, we go with the current. Positive when you go against the current, that's a voltage rise. And of course, we have the two voltages, the 6 volt and the 12 volt sources. So we end up with two more equations, equation 1 and equation 2. Then we simplify those equations by removing all, by replacing all currents greater than I1 and I2 to end up with two equations that only have I1 and I2 in them. We solve them simultaneously to solve for I2. We then solve for I1, which is one of the answers. And then, of course, using these three equations right here, we solve for I3, I4, and I5. And it turns out that in this case, all five currents are legitimate, they're correct, and so therefore all four answers need to be answered correct. 
We'll do this one again, but now what we're going to do is we're going to simplify it by collapsing, by simply taking half of the circuit and folding it onto the other circuit to make a simpler circuit and then see if we end up with the same answers and see if it's any quicker to do it that way. So stay tuned and we'll try this whole problem again using a hopefully simplified method. No, no, this is, is uh, well, yeah, what we could have done is we could have said, hey, there's eight branches, we have eight different currents, and then we need eight equations, but that's really overdoing it. You really need to see through that and say, oh, wait a minute, there's a lot of symmetry there, so I can reduce right off the bat the number of currents we're considering, so we only considered five currents in this case.